buddy. Hey, come here. Oh, oh. What's wrong? Bad nightmare. Are you just having a nightmare? Yeah. Oh, buddy, that's so terrible. What can I do for you? Can I get you a glass of water? No. You sure? No. You want to try to go back to sleep? No. What do you want? Read me a story. You want me to read you a story? Yes. Okay. What should I read? Want me to grab a book? No. What do you want? Read me a story about mommy. That's a long, long story. You sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, where do you want me to start? It's the very beginning with the ships. With the ships, okay. Well, I came here to America on a ship. And it was a very long, long trip. And I sat there for months, and I ate my hard tack and whatnot. Did it have worms in it? Yes, it did indeed, but I'd pick them out. So I sat there for months on that boat, and I thought about all the things I was gonna do when we landed. I sat and made plans and thought about what was gonna happen. But what I didn't know was that in America, there was a war going on. So as soon as we landed, right off the boat, they handed me a musket, and I was supposed to fight in that. And I fought for a while, but then I decided I didn't really wanna fight anymore. And the generals, they didn't like that I wasn't going to fight, so they said that they were going to hang me. Got a neck? Yes, because that's what they do to deserters. But of course, I didn't want that to happen. And so the first chance I had, I ran. Did they shot you? Yeah, I'm getting to that. I ran as, as fast as I could and as far as I could over the hills and, and fields. And they sent riders on horses after me, and one of them must have gotten me in his sights because he shot me. Shot me. Shot me! Right in the side. Right here. Yep, the bullet went in right here. Oh! I feel it. Yeah, it went in pretty good, didn't it? How did it connect? It connected very suddenly, and I spun around, and I shouted out, but then I lay down, and they thought I was dead. But I had a trick up my sleeve. I was still alive. I didn't know why, and I didn't know how. But I knew there had to be a reason. So I waited for them to ride off, and when I could no longer hear the sound of their hooves, that's when I got up and I started walking. I walked from near to far, from here to there. And that's when I met your mom. I came up over a hill and I saw a terrible thing. There was fire on the plane and dead bodies. Men and women and horses and even children. Someone had come up in the night and killed them and stolen all of their things. They scalped them? Yes. Do you know what a scalp is? Do you remember? They cut their hair off? Yeah, that's when they cut the top of the hair off. Yeah, right there, right there. And, we... and then they keep it. It's really one of the worst things you can do to somebody. So I, I looked around there. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was so awful. But then I heard a sound. Do you know what that was? Mom. Yeah. She was laying there under a wagon, half unconscious. And that was your mom. Was she scalped? No. But whoever had done this, they hadn't let her off easy. They cut her tongue out. Was your blood? Oh, buddy. Her whole mouth was full of blood. But she was alive. That was the important thing. That and something else. What was it? She had a baby in her tummy. She had a baby in her tummy. And who was that baby? Me. Yeah. 
<laughs> you were teensy, but you were still big enough to show. I knew that she needed help, so I picked her up and I carried her. I carried her as far as I could, and when I couldn't carry her any farther, I set her down in the woods and I built us a shelter out of branches. And we stayed there one night, and then another night. And before too long, we decided we were in love and all of that. So I built us a house. This house? No. This is an apartment. Don't think of this as anything special. I'll build you a real house someday. Do you want me to keep going with this story? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. So we had our house. And your mom and I would sit there and we'd spend our days together. And I began to think that maybe that's why this bullet didn't kill me. Because of this. And winter came. And then springtime. And with spring, you were born. You were born right there in that house. And your mom and I loved you very, very much. And you never cried. Did you know that? No. And you looked like you were from outer space. And your mom would hold you, and she'd nurse you, and she'd sing to you. And even though she didn't have a tongue, and she couldn't make a sound, if I listened really, really hard, I could hear her singing, and it was the most beautiful singing in the world. And it was just for us two. I bet if you think really hard, you can remember what it sounded like. Do you think you can? Yes. If you close your eyes, you can. You're lucky. I wish I could. Now this is where things get scary. You want me to go on? You can make it less scary. Well, I can try, but it's just the way the story goes. You sure you want me to go on? Yes. You sure? Yes. Because I can stop here. You know exactly what's going to happen. I hear it. You want to hear it? Yes. Okay. One day, I was out planting food for us to eat, and I heard the sound of thunder. Only it wasn't thunder. It was men on horses. There were four riders, and they came, and they snatched you out of your crib. Your mom was, she was screaming and yelling, but no one could hear her. She tried to stop them, and they pushed her down. She did everything she could, but it was no use. Why did they take me? I don't know. Some some people are just monsters, and they do terrible things. Did they want to eat me? Well, maybe they were, and maybe they weren't. But if they were planning to, they never got around to it, did they? No. Your mom was real upset, and I was real upset, too. But I told her that we would find you. I promised her that we would find you. And I thought, that's why I'm still alive. That's why, that's why the bullet didn't kill me. Because I had to find you. So we got up, we left that house, and we began to search for clues. We looked here and there, near and far. But you were gone without a trace. Where was I? If I'd known, I would have found you. I try to remember sometimes. Well, there's a reason why we forget things sometimes. Sometimes it's what we have to do to get by. It helps us be strong when we need to be. So we looked. We looked for a year, and then for another year, and then another year went by after that. We would ask around, and we would hear stories sometimes about men on horses doing terrible things. And we'd say, was there a child with them? But no one knew, no one could say. Your mom never gave up hope. There were times at night when I would wake up and I'd see her sitting up and she'd be singing to you, hoping that you'd hear her. Her hair turned from black to silver. And one day I looked at her and I realized that she was an old lady. And then one day, not too long after that, she died. Why? That's just the way things go. She died, and I buried her. Not you. No, not me. Because I had something to do 
I stayed alive. Like Dracula? No, not like that. I was still me. My heart was still beating. I was still the same me that's here now. Dad? Yeah? Was I in Mommy's tummy? When I found you? Yes. Yeah, you sure were. Bring my dad back then? That's a good question. And when you get older, we can talk about the science of all that. But for sure, I am your daddy, and you are my boy. Do I look like you? I think it's the other way around. I think I look like you. So your mom was buried. And I was real sad for a long time. And I couldn't do anything. But then, one day I got up and I kept going. Then you worked on a trains? Yes. The whole country, there were railroads being built all over. And I'd travel around and help lay tracks. Remember there were Chinamen, Irishmen, and me. And we would blow up mountains and we'd build bridges and everywhere we went, I looked for you. In the camps at night, Sometimes I'd hear children crying, but I knew it wasn't you because I'd recognize your voice anywhere. And the years kept passing, and another war came, but I didn't fight in that one. And then another one after that. Time kept rolling on and everything was changing except for me, I stayed the same. There were buildings being built and roads and houses but I just stayed the same. There was one time when I went back and I tried to find that first house, our first little house where you were born. I couldn't find it anywhere. There wasn't a single trace. There were even times, buddy, when I thought maybe that you were dead because I couldn't find anything in me to tell me that you were still alive. All I had was this bullet. And sometimes, sometimes it didn't feel like it was enough anymore. It had been a hundred years. A hundred years had gone by since those men had taken you. But who did find me? Yes, who did find you? Where? Of all places, I found you on my front doorstep. I was woken up one night by the sound of horses' hooves on the pavement, loud as thunder. And when I went down to see, there you were, all cuddled up in a gray wool blanket, looking like not even a minute had passed by, much less a century, and not a hair was hurt on your head. And that was four years ago. And now, here we are now. That's why I get scared now. Why? But I want to get taken again. Well, I don't think that, that will happen. I don't want you to die. Wow. That's an interesting thing because I think that now that I've found you, maybe my clock is going to start ticking just like everyone else's. And this bullet in my side is going to work its way through. I can feel it sometimes worming its way through. And that leads me to believe that I will die someday. But not for a long time. What about me? What about you? Will I die someday? Yes, you will. I'm still be an old man. Buddy, you already are an old man. You're older than old. Not as old as you. No. One day you will be. One day you'll be older than me. Gone. Maybe I can still find you. Doesn't work that way. When I'm gone, I'll just be gone. And that's all there is to it. And then what you have to do, what you have to do is find out why you're still 